In this video, we're going to look at now at filling and closing a wide range of different products. We've got proline modes, we've got spheres, and we've got little cups. We're going to try and use a wide range of fillings, and within the actual fillings, we're going to add little extras to it. The first one I'm going to start with is the proline mode, and with this one, I'm going to work with, first of all, a ganache. The thing about the piping bag is not to overfill the piping bag, otherwise during the piping process you could get spillages over onto the actual tray. The second thing is, is to make sure that you nip the bottom of the piping bag sufficiently to deposit the ganache into the mould. So using a pair of scissors then, and it's always advisable just to do a little tester first before you go into the mould, nip the bottom and then away you go. Now, another key point here is as you're piping the ganache into the mould, probably once you've done the first two fills, it's advisable to just to bend down and have a look straight across the mould. The last thing you want is for the ganache to be protruding proud because eventually we're going to cap it with a layer of chocolate and that can cause problems. So I'm just looking now, I'm below the top of the mould. So I know now I can continue with the process. Moving straight down, applying pressure from above, and then nipping each time as I come out of the mould. Working all the way down. What I'm going to do now, just to give it a little touch, we've got some cube ginger. I'm just going to take the cube ginger and just drop that now on top of that milk ganache. And once again, thinking about how much ganache you put in, you've got to allow for the ginger, because once you press the ginger down into the ganache, once again, you're going to get extra, extra volume. Okay. As an alternative to prevent that overspill of ganache, you could half fill with the ganache, then drop the insert, then repipe, keeping it below the top of the mould. Now I'm going to move on to the caramel mask now from Kesco. Once again, we need to be aware of how much we take off the bag. And it's the same principle again, piping and then nipping. Just keeping it below the top of the mould. Okay. So that's one mould completed now where we've got ganache and the caramel filling. Right, using the same caramel mix, I'm now going to fill the spheres. Same again. Applying the pressure and then nipping. It's important when we fill the fears that we fill them almost to the top and that there's no air pockets there at all, which could possibly create a little mold growth. And it's like everything else the more you do it, the more competent you come and the quicker you are. Piping is also a good technique when preparing petit fours. Here we've got some little chocolate petit four cups and we've got the passion fruit ganache. Piping the ganache into each cup. Halfway full. I want to give them a, a crunchy texture. We've got the paillette fouettine, which we can just sprinkle on top of this fruit ganache. So you can imagine now you're eating through the chocolate, you've got the nice fruit there, and then you get this crispy wafer in the middle. And then we top it with more of the ganache. On the dark Petit Four Cups, I'm going to use 
a dark chocolate ganache. I'm going to show you two different techniques. Once again, I'm piping the cups halfway, and then I've got some lovely griotine cherries here, which have been macerated in quiche. So we just drop these now into the ganache, just pressing them down. And then going back to the ganache again, and we just top them off, sealing that wonderful flavoured cherry between this dark chocolate ganache. The other cups, I'm filling right to the top now with the ganache. And what I'm going to do with this, these, I'm taking the creatine cherries again, but this time I'm leaving the stalks on them. And I'm using them for flavouring, but also presentation. As you can imagine, a nice row of these on a petit four tray with other petit fours, it just gives the tray a little height and makes them a bit more a bit more appealing. And then what we do with them then, <clears throat> we place them in a refrigerator to set off the ganache. Right, what I'd like to do now is show you closing techniques for the spheres and the pralines. I'm going to do two methods for the spheres. I'm going to do freehand piping and then using the capping off plate. First of all, for the freehand, I've taken, I've taken a plain chocolate for this because I've got it on, on tap here within the enrobing tank. So we place it in a piping bag. I'm just nipping off the edge of the bag. Once again, always check the flow of chocolate that you're going to have enough. Nipping technique, this one. And for this, we are just piping and nipping each time, working down the chocolate. This particular chocolate has a ganache filling. And then if we go to the other side of the tray, this has got a caramel filling, a softer filling, this one. And once again, just working down to the end of the tray. If we now go to the template, we're taking the template now and we're going to place the template directly over the spheres. Just make sure all the truffles are in line. And then, taking the, the piping bag, this is much more of a flow movement. Once you've drawn the chocolate down the plate, you can then just easily move the plate so the excess chocolate now on the top of the plate can now be scraped back off into the machine so there's a little or no wastage at all. If you've got excessive amounts of chocolate once you've piped along the plate, before removal you can also run the, plate, uh, the scraper down the plate and this will take away any excess. Capping pralines now. For this I'm using a different technique, I'm going to be working with a ladle and I'm going to take the chocolate directly from the machine. Remembering the technique of holding the mould, fingers underneath, thumb on the top, and then starting from the top and working down not using too much chocolate till you get to the bottom. Then taking a palette knife, just work the chocolate now to seal the proline. And then you can just finish it off then by just running your scraper over the top. Right, now that we've sealed the shells and the pralines, we need now to chill them back down to set them off in readiness of coating the shells and turning out the pralines from the trays.